Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Swiss Alps How I Did It series where I break down the why, how and what of my trip to the Jungfrau region. The idea being to help you should you want to add such an adventure to your attempts to make your life a story worth telling. This video details how I travelled to and around the Jungfrau region and how I planned my days. I will be entirely honest, my trip to the Jungfrau region didn't actually start with a trip there because I didn't know it existed. I was actually looking around for how to travel Europe by train because I sort of got that into my head and I will admit Switzerland came up as one of the great places to do by train. Then I saw completely unrelated, because I do subscribe to her channel, a currently Hannah video where she went on a mystery trip that happened to be the Jungfrau region of Switzerland. And after seeing that video, or series of videos, I was done. That was where I was going. <laughs> So the origins of the trip was born out of a rail holiday and then that element stuck. While exploring the Canadian Rockies by car was the right decision for that trip, not using a car and using trains was definitely the right way to explore Switzerland and the Jungfrau region. Before we get to the actual train journeys, which will give you an idea of how the region works, I need to introduce you to two mobile applications and a website that proved essential. The first is the Swiss Federal Railway app. The second is the Meteo Swiss app. Both of these mobile apps should win awards. <laughs> Let's consider the Federal Railway app first. Say you've come back down from Grindelwald first and you want to get back to Wengen. It's coming up to 1400 hours. You pull up the app, type in from and to stations and then you instantly have your route its cost and all the connections, the train numbers, what platforms, everything you need. <laughs> you even get, as I said, the train identifications to make you get on the right one. You can also buy your tickets directly there if you don't have a regional pass. The amazing thing is, this app worked no matter where I was, even when halfway up a mountain on the remotest hikes. Absolutely brilliant. I lost track of how many people I actually helped at stations or on the train by quickly pulling up this app and looking up routes on the fly. Your second challenge in the Jungfrau region is the weather, <laughs> because it can be variable. There is every chance you look at your weather forecast for the week you're going and despair at the clouds and thunderstorms. I know I did, but I haven't been to the Canadian Rockies. I, I did sort of get some perspective on that because basically don't panic. It all depends on where the weather is on the day because that is a very macro view of the weather and when the rain comes down and where it comes down at, well there is an app for that. I use the Swiss Met Office app, I think that's pretty much what it is. I used it every morning throughout the day to alter my plans if needed and on the evening to assess what to do the following day. As you can see, I have all the major towns on the app. The key thing is you can go into each one and get a profile of the day. So let's say I'm considering going to Grindelwald first. So I'll check Grindelwald. The important information is the rain profile across the day as that nasty storm cloud may be irrelevant until late in the afternoon. The scary thing is that weather profile graph was very accurate. And what this app allowed me to do was look at a day that looked absolutely terrible, pick the right place to go based on the weather profile over the day and have full and fruitful and exciting days and easily dodging the rain. The website I used a lot was the Jungfrau website as it details a lot of the hikes and attractions in the area. Pretty much as you'd imagine. Once I was in the region, I used it a lot less other than for one key part of it. The link to the webcams at the top of the mountains. You want to check these before setting off anywhere. There is literally no point going up to Grindelwald first if it's covered in mist and there's certainly no point in doing something expensive like top of Europe if all your views are obscured. So even it doesn't really matter what the weather is like on the app though keep that in mind it doesn't really matter what the weather is like where you are because of course you're at various heights. If you're in the Lauterbrunnen Valley you're at the bottom and Grindelwald first is at height. Check the webcams. 
The key thing when planning your Jungfrau region trip is not to schedule out the days, but have a clear idea of the type of experiences you want, then a list of activities. I then leave it at that and then be flexible based on the weather. The only thing I had booked was my paraglide. Everything else was planned on the day before or the morning of the day, literally. These apps make that possible. Now let's consider the journeys I took as it's a good way to get an idea of the region itself. So trains. Obviously, I needed to get to and fro the Jungfrau region. I flew into Geneva as that was the easiest flight from Newcastle. The train station is literally part of the airport and it's a really easy walk over to it to hop on a train. I mean, really easy. Don't panic. It's really easy. The app throws up numerous options. I chose the one with the least connections. So that meant Geneva to Bern and then Bern to Interlaken. At that point, I was in the region a picturesque two hours 45 minute journey, the key bits being Lake Geneva on the right at the start and Lake, no doubt pronounce it wrong, Briennes at the end on the left. Since I stayed in Wengen, my use of the trains was largely about going to Kleiner Scheidegg to cross into the Grindelwald Valley or down into Lautenbrunnen in the Lauterbrunnen Valley. I went from Wengen in the Lauterbrunnen Valley to Kleiner Scheidegg on the mountain and then from Kleiner Scheidegg down into Grindelwald Valley three times. It may have been four, I have lost count. I went on the earliest trains. I was often the only one going from Kleiner Scheidegg down to Grindelwald because everyone else was coming up for top of Europe. It is an absolutely glorious train journey that has to be experienced to be believed. It just has to be experienced to be believed. <laughs> In the Grindelwald direction, you get the mountains on your right and the epic valleys on your left. One day, the train even descended into cloud. It was totally epic. You can also cross over to the Grindelwald Valley from the Lauterbrunnen side via cable car, which is apparently awesome to do. The problem was the Grindelwald Grund station at the opposite side was being worked on, so I didn't have that out mountain, uh, that option. So actually, completely by accident, because the hike was really to go up to Kleiner Scheidegg and I took the wrong route, I ended up hiking across it, following the cable car, and it was amazing. <laughs> if I wasn't exploring the Grindelwald Valley and Grindelwald first, and sticking around the Lauterbrunnen Valley, then I'd take the train between Wengen and Lauterbrunnen. It is one of the most amazing short rail journeys you can take, with continual views dotted along the route, down into the Lauterbrunnen Valley. It, it is just amazing. <laughs> and this is, this is a testament to the Swiss organization, right? They even have markers by the rail track, which you can see from the windows to alert you to the fact that a view is coming up. <laughs> you can even pull your windows down, right? They have little knobs on, you pull them down and you can pull those windows down so far you could almost climb out. I don't know how they allow it, to be honest, <laughs> but it's absolutely amazing. It is all very thought through. Once you're in Lauterbrunnen, you can walk the valley floor, go up the other side to Meron, out to Interlaken, etc, etc. It is amazing. That was the vast majority of the train journeys, but there was also trains from Grindelwald to Interlaken, Interlaken to Lauterbrunnen, as basically I was flexible with my days and just hopped on enough trains as necessary because I had the Jungfrau Regional Pass. The key thing to take away about the trains, both the regional ones getting you from city to city and the ones within the Jungfrau region is they are impeccably organised. And this isn't just about that mythical Swiss punctuality. It's something more elusive than that. You feel in every moment that the trains are delivering a service to you and that service is to get you from A to B and every small decision they have made is to reinforce that. The app tells you everything you need to know with a few swipes and types. The fact the trains are clearly marked so you never feel like you'll get on the wrong one. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> the fact screens on the trains tell you the connections at the station you're approaching, assuming you don't know them already from the app. The fact those connections are always timely, as if they know where you want to go. <laughs> The fact, despite arriving at numerous stations with a connection in less than 10 minutes, I always found the next platform and got on the train. The network and the service around it is truly designed to get you where you want to go. It is a, 
It's a joy to experience in ways that are hard to fully describe until you've done it. I loved it. So that's the apps I used and the trains and how I use them to plan my days and keep things flexible based on the weather, which is essential. If you go in the height of the season and just get glorious suns all day, maybe you won't have to do that, but it's the mountains, right? So it's an advantage to keep things dynamic. Hopefully that's helpful. Please consider liking and subscribing. Certainly post a comment if you have any questions or if you have any experiences on the trains and how to organize your day when in the Jungfrau region. Until the next video, let's try and make a life a story worth telling.